Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. This is my Friday Sews video for February something something. I have no idea what date it is, <laughs> but thank you for being here anyway. This was a series started by Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room. You'll find the link to her channel in the description below and be sure to check out the hashtag Friday Sews so you can see all of the other sewists who have posted videos today. So today, I am super, super excited to share with you my ideal waistband. So I decided to try the free contoured waistband pattern by Green Style Creations. I couldn't find anywhere where it said what the seam allowance was. So I searched on their blog to see if there were there was any comment about other seam allowances in their patterns. and. I found something that mentioned 3 eighths of an inch. So I think that's what I tried the first time on these and it came up too small. So I picked it out. I'd actually done two rows of zigzag stitch stitches to reinforce the seam so they wouldn't pop. Um, so I just took out the inner one and it ended up fitting perfectly, thank goodness. But I really, I need to adjust my pattern because I need them to be a little bit wider. I know a lot of people put um, power mesh in their waistbands, but I don't have any of that in my stash. And I don't have a huge fabric stash. But lo and behold, I found some swimsuit fabric. I decided to use this self fabric, which is just an 80-20 nylon spandex blend for the outside. And then I use this on the inside. I haven't washed the pants yet since I sewed it, so there's my B to remember where the back and the front is, um, which I need to figure out tags too, because I've everything I've made, half the time I'm like, all right, what is the front, what is the back? But I don't like tags, so I need to figure out something. Anyway, I tried it out and the waistband. It feels amazing and because this waistband i use, i sewed the ultra high rise version because these pants just without the waistband sit pretty low on my dairy air so i felt like even with the ultra high rise it would it would be a good height and it feels like air they stay on my hips and they don't have that uncomfortable band feeling that you get with elastic. So um, I just love them and should really try them on for you, shouldn't I? Okay, hold on. Okay. By the way, the pink dress that I just took off is Butterick 6388. I showed that in a previous video. There it is, you can see it has these little triangle pieces. Lots of opportunities. If you like to color block, there are so many opportunities here. You could do a different fabric for this back yoke or for the sleeves or for each side. I've seen some really cute versions. Mine is just simple pink on pink. I did buy some fabric to maybe do some top stitching, not fabric thread. But today I was wearing the dress and I thought, it's cute as it is. Do I need to bring in some added stress of potentially unpicking something? You know, if it doesn't quite work out, the top stitching, could it just be cute as it is? So I'm, I'm pondering that. Let me show you these um, leggings. Here they are. So they fit great, no muffin top. It, because it comes right over that curve and sits right on the bottom of my waist, it doesn't fall down and it looks cute even on the inside. And with that, I'm telling you, this material with that slick um, swimsuit material inside, they feel amazing. So I highly recommend doing that trying it out 
let me show you the cool thing I noticed when I got these. I mean, this is another shirt that matches these leggings, but um, years, a couple years ago, I started really thinking about my wardrobe. I didn't want to keep buying things that didn't work for me or that I didn't wear. So one of the things I started with was analyzing the colors that I really love to wear. And I really took some time on this and thought through over the years, which colors have I felt best in, which look best in photographs. If there are things that I didn't wear for some reason, I really analyzed why didn't I wear that. And I actually made notes on it, things that I like and things that I don't like. So I noticed that a lot of my garments and a lot of my fabrics mix and match because everything is within those colors that I've already determined I love to wear and I like wearing a lot of colorful fabrics at once. So anyway, so this just happens to match these because this these colors are ones that I frequently like to wear. Not the black as much, but the purple and pink and green, those are all things. Well, really, I don't have a lot of green, but I have some. Anyway, but let me show you what happened. I went to my closet, and I was thinking about a capsule wardrobe for working out. So I've got my pink, my blue top matches, my purple top matches, and my coral top matches. I also, my two sports bras that still work with me, both match, and they match all the tops. I was so thrilled when I found this out. So now I'm just looking for some more fabric that I can make leggings out of that will be in all of these colors as well uh, because I just love these so much. All right, these are my wide leg pants. Here's my waistband with the swim fabric on the inside. Same contoured waistband. So these pants are from the It's So Simple McCall's L9553. This was a pattern from Walmart, but apparently a lot of these It's So Simple patterns were previous quick sew patterns or other companies that they kind of rebranded. One of the things I was worried about with the wide leg pants is that they would make my legs look like tree trunks. In the past, I have not found that silhouette to be flattering on me. So one of the things that I did was I looked online to find out what style of wide leg pants would be flattering for an hourglass figure. The channel that I found that was so helpful is actually called Petite Dressing and it's um, Chi Li is the woman who has this channel. She has amazing advice. I mean, I've seen so many of her videos. Um, she talks a lot about how to style clothes in a way that's flattering for your body type. And I have found that her videos are the most helpful of any that I have found. I'm not petite, I'm 5'6", but I feel like her styling guidance works no matter what, how tall you are. So one of the things that she said for the hourglass figure is that, I mean, in general, wide leg pants are like not the most flattering for the figure, but she said, if you are gonna wear the wide leg pants, 
make sure that it's got some shaping around your bottom um, and so that it doesn't, let me point you down a little bit so you can look at my bottom. Um, oh, you're not low enough. Okay, hold on. So she said you want it to wear, let's see if you can see that, where you can actually see the shape of the bottom and you don't want like tons and tons of gathers here where it just looks like a big mass. So I really like, I think the combination of this pattern, because it doesn't have too many gathers around it, but also I feel like this fabric using this really drapey rayon chalet has helped to, it doesn't cling, but it doesn't bag out. So it shows my figure, even though these are wider like pants. So I really like that. I'm running into the curtains here. Um, I think that's really flattering. And then I also feel like switching out the waistband for this yoga style waistband is also just a much more flattering option for me. Um, I The original pattern has a, a an elastic waistband with a drawstring. I don't like tucking tops into my pants. So anything above, like on the outside of my pants, the drawstring is going to make it look all bumpy. And I hate dealing with ties and fiddly things anyway. So I think that this was a really great option. Now, let me show you the top style that I'm thinking of making to go with these pants. Okay, recognize this top? So this is another top um, that I made recently from Gertie's Sewing Vintage Casual book. This is her sweetheart neckline top, even though I ended up just keeping it with the U-neck. So this top, let me pin you down. I think the shape, so not this exact top, but the shape of this top, I think will go really well with these pants and be great for summer. Now you have to imagine it in, I have my kind of slouchy bra that has big clips because that's the one that looks good in that pink dress, but I would normally have a different bra that wouldn't show that. So um, this, I'm planning to make some more tops like this, but in different, colors to go with these pants. Let me show you. I forgot to mention earlier, but you probably noticed I haven't hemmed these yet. <laughs> because it's rayon, I was letting them hang overnight uh, and then I will hem them later today. But I wanted to show you some of the things that I did for these pants. I, I did my French seams and I almost didn't how pretty those are. I almost didn't because I was concerned that these would end up not looking good and being a waste of time <laughs> because I, like I said, I haven't liked um, wide leg pants in the past. So I was concerned about putting all that time into doing French seams and then finishing with the pants and hating them. But I thought I cannot not do French seams on a rayon chalet. I know enough to know, you know, that that needs to be done. So I went ahead and did it. And I'm so glad, obviously, because they, they do look so pretty. But, and then on the crotch seam, I did my method that I learned from the Peg Legs for Pirates pattern, which is, I sewed the legs separately and then put one leg inside out, inside the other leg, and then sewed the crotch seam in one go. <laughs> and I couldn't quite, it was late, and I couldn't quite figure out how I would do that French seam style. It just seemed like it would, 
I don't know, it was a head scratcher, which now it seems like, well, surely that would be obvious. But at the time, it wasn't going to happen. So I just um, sewed it and then folded in each side of the seam and then sewed, like edge stitched it. I don't know what that's called. These are marks, this says center back. <laughs> So for my marking tools, I just use a washable Crayola marker. I haven't ever had issues with that coming out and it makes it so easy to write. I've tried tons of different types of chalk. I do have regular chalk, like a, a box, a cheap box of children's chalk. And sometimes I use that, but if a marker's on hand, I'll just use the marker. Anywho, I haven't finished the waistband yet because I was still fiddling with it late last night, but I need to finish that. But, um, and oh, and for the fabric, so I didn't have a swimsuit fabric or any kind of, I wanted kind of that slick feel on the outside as well, but I didn't have anything and I wanted to get these done. <laughs> I wanted to be able to try them on and see if they actually worked. So I took my fabric, and this has worked out for me so well this week. I'll tell you a little bit about it in a minute, but I just took my fabric and I opened my fabric drawers and I kind of just scanned this along and what jumped out at me was this, um, it's a cotton, what is it? The ribbing fabric or cuffing fabric? It's not the cuffing, ribbing? You know, it's for, it's made for, the necklines and cuffs and ne you know stuff like that um, but it comes in a, a roll it's rolled up and you have to cut it and cut out the waistband so that's what I did and I decided to use that because it is stretchy and I feel like it's a really nice match and then I did that on the inside and I stitched it down if you have been thinking about how to make a waistband more comfortable, this is it. I'm super thrilled with this method. And I know with different fabrics, you might have to tweak it a little bit or make parts of it a little bigger or smaller, but this is just such a dream come true waistband. But I couldn't figure out what colors would go nicely with this. So I took it to my closet and I just kind of walked with it and held it alongside all of the clothes in our closet to see what stood out to me. And I actually have a dress that <laughs> matches these pants. So it's wrinkled right now because it was in a to be fixed pile. But look at that. <laughs> it even has the way that the water is designed looks so much like the stripies in this. I almost decided to make this into a top to go with it. I thought that would look really cute. But when I tried it on, I remembered that I had already done some shaping to this dress to make it fit me better. And it's actually really cute. So I'm just going to add some bust darts in the middle um, to kind of give it a little more shape. It was really tenty. I bought it at Marshall's last year because I love the fabric, but it looks like a tent and I am not a fan of that style. I know it looks good on other people, but because of my breasts, when I wear anything like that that's shapeless, it goes out and it goes straight down and it makes me look like a foot wider than I am. So I stay away from anything that says trapeze or tent or oversized. I don't, I just walk away. But this fabric was too cute. So I've already taken out several inches on each side. And one of my plans this week is to go ahead and add some darts, or kind of fit it a little better to see if I can get it um, to become one of my summer dresses. Anywho. Oh, <laughs> the whole point of me bringing out this dress was that because they look so similar, I realized that these kind of corally, coppery colors look really nice with this color. The next fabric 
that I'm planning to make these wide leg pants with. This one. See how these go together? I mean, I have extra fabric in this and I'm even thinking of making a little summery top with the, the extra so that I can have a top that matches these. And if it goes with this and I could have a faux jumpsuit look, all of these things, I mean, I literally started singing Everything's Coming Up Roses, <laughs> but everything just working together. When you pick, when you keep to these colors that you know you like and that all go together, it's amazing. So anyway, um, so the, the coppery color, the kind of coral, not coppery, coral kind of color in these flowers goes really well with this fabric too. So when I make those tops, they'll go with these pants and these pants and um, I'm sure a lot of other things that I'll make. So my plans for the week are to finish the hem on those pants and to make up these into pants. So I'm excited about that. This was the first time that I worked with Rayon. I read a lot about it over the past few months. It really wasn't that bad. It shifted a bit, but I used starch, which I don't know if it helped. I used starch when I ironed it. The thing that I learned, if you haven't worked with Rayon Shally before, so you know how they say, don't drag your iron? Seriously, don't drag it. <laughs> this is the... This is the time when you literally just put down, lift up, put down, lift up. I did do a test on a little piece of the fabric to make sure it wasn't going to burn at my setting because I also don't really use uh, a super low setting, but it worked out just fine. And I'm trying to think the only, it did have some fraying and there was a time when I had it all cut out and I was really careful to just leave it alone and not mess with it too much. But there was a time when I just left it on the table. I went out of the room and I came back and it was frayed. And I, I was thinking, what were you doing when I was gone? You know, was there a fabric party in here? What was going on that caused this fraying? I don't know. All right, so now I'm gonna get my list to make sure I covered everything today. Oh, yes, let me tell you this great tip that I read for making these pants, or really any pants. I was on the Pattern Review website, which by the way, is so amazing. You can search by fabric and look at all the projects people made in that fabric which is what I've been doing with the Rayon Chalet. Anyway, one of the tips that I found was that somebody said when they make pants for the first time, a pants pattern, they always add three inches to the top on the back um, and the front, I think. They said then they grade down to the normal seam line on the sides, but I went ahead and just left three extra inches on the top all the way around and I marked on the fabric where the pattern waistline was or where the pattern stopped so that I would know and then I could it and then you try on your yoga waistband on top of that so you can have a little more wiggle room if you need some more of the pants in the back <laughs> or a little more in the front you have that fabric to work with. And it made it so much easier to get a good fit. So then I put my yoga waistband on top and pulled the fabric up and around until it had the look that I wanted. I just marked with, with my little Crayola washable marker where I wanted it. And then of course added 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, cut it, and now I have, I know how to alter my pattern to get that look that I want. And actually, I ended up needing some extra fabric, I think actually in the front, um, compared to what the pattern offered. So I thought that was such a great tip. And it made me feel more confident making the pants because I thought I've got all that wiggle room that I can use. A few other things that helped me this week. At the start of the week, I was feeling a little scattered. I don't have, 
I usually don't have huge chunks of time to sew at once. I'm kind of running in and out of my sewing room throughout the day. And so when I would come in, I, was a, I just felt like there were a lot of different projects in my head and I wasn't sure where I stood on anything or what I needed to do. So I went ahead and I just my sewing notebook and I just put projects, what I haven't started, what's in process. So one of these includes finding a woven top pattern um, in process and then what's needed for it next. So when I had the wide leg pants, it was like, okay, I need waist fabric, which then I checked off. I need to twall the size 18, which I then checked off, um, and twall the contour waist, which I was able to check off. So it kind of helped me focus. And then for things that I wanted to refashion or finish, I wrote those down as well. It helped me so much and instantly I felt more grounded and focused. Just a tip. Okay, so my notes for this, we already said, oh, I want to thank Meg from The Fabric Fairy. Her website has a lot of different types of stretch fabrics and she has other fabrics as well, but she has a wide selection of stretch fabrics, swimsuit fabrics, things like that. Really beautiful fabrics. And I wrote to her to ask about a specific fabric. I told her what I was going to be using it for, which was my waistband. And did she think that this would be appropriate? She got back to me right away on, I think it was a Saturday with information. And then I ended up finding this ribbing um, in my stash. So I decided to use that instead. And I had to write to her again to say, hey, can we never mind on this and I'll come back later to get my swimsuit fabric when I'm making that. She was just so helpful. I really want to encourage you if you're looking for any kind of stretch fabric to check out the Fabric Fairy and to contact her if you have any questions. I was so thrilled with the customer service. Well, I wanted to ask your thoughts on thread. I know a lot of people use the Guterman thread and I just bought some Coates and Clark all purpose from Joann's. What do you use? Do you find that the Guterman thread, honestly, I haven't even done a price comparison, but do you think it's worth it to get the Guterman thread? Will it make that much of a difference or do you use like a Coates and Clark type thread and is that fine for you? I would love to hear what you use. Cause I've looked online. It seems like from what I've read, um, people think that the Guterman actually makes a big difference. Let me know what you think. All right. Um, other plans. I, so the pl getting the fabric for the tops, also finding a skirt. I might make a skirt to go with this cheetah print top. I have some extra fabric and Right now, I don't have anything to wear this top with <laughs> because I'm still working on bottoms that fit. So I haven't worn it and I love it. I thought if I made, you know, my special yoga waistband with this fabric and then even just a, a couple simple gathered tiers to make a knee length skirt that it could be really cute in the summer to pair the two of those together. So that's another thing on the plans. And then of course, making more wide leg pants with this fabric. I need to wash that fabric still. And what I did for my rayon, I go ahead and stitch up the sides of the fabric before I put it in the wash to help prevent some fraying and shrinkage. And it really worked well for me, so. Uh, okay, I wanted to mention a couple other videos that I saw this week that I really loved. I watch a lot of sewing vloggers. You know, I have little moments or when I'm feeding my son or, you know, different, I'm trying to get him to go to sleep, things like that, where I can put in my earbuds and watch a sewing video. So there were a couple this week that really stood out to me and I wanted to mention in case you haven't seen them. 
The first one is Sarah from Naughty Gnome Craft, Naughty Gnome Crafts posted a video, seven ways to wear a pencil skirt and to style it, and then six patterns that you can find online. She styled it in so many cute ways, and that's an area that I really struggle with. I don't, I'm a jeans and t-shirt, or when I was a nurse, I was a scrubs person, and then when I was a dancer, I just wore spandex and like yoga leggings all the time, which is kind of what I wear now. So learning to style outfits is something that I've wanted to work on. So I loved this video, and if you haven't seen her channel yet, I binge watch her videos. <laughs> I really like them, so check it out. The other, uh, so I have two more videos. Um, Kristen from Dahlia Society just posted a video of her makes for the new Pattern Emporium pattern, which is their Field of Dreams dress. I've seen a lot of of versions of this already because it's the big pattern release week but when I saw Kristen's video the way that she amped up the pattern the way that she did her little hacks and tweaks was stunning I mean she really is an artist and I highly recommend all of her videos but I highly recommend checking out that video, especially if you've been looking at that pattern and considering whether you want to use it for maybe a summer dress. Her video will give you some additional ideas that you won't even see anywhere else, even though there are so many great versions of the dress out. I just, she's amazing. And then the last thing, which this video seriously blew my mind from Karina at Lifting Pins and Needles. She did a video on the No Bounce Shelf Bra Solution. I have a larger bust and the shelf bras are not supportive enough. And if you have a full bra and a cami with a shelf bra, it feels too restrictive. So I have actually been thinking all week, I wonder how I could make a good built-in bra for my some of my summer dresses because I like wearing spaghetti straps, but I hate strapless bras. So, and I don't like looking like a uniboob either. So, <laughs> so I've actually been thinking all week, I wonder how I could do that. I wonder what I would need and kind of going through different dresses that I've had in the past that have had built-in bras and how were they constructed. Anyway, I watched her video the other day and it's kind of one that you need to watch over and over. It was amazing the way that she did it and the support that she got and she has a larger bust was amazing. I can't wait to figure out where to use this because once you know how to do a good built-in bra, you could put it in halter tops, your swimsuits, you know, strapless dresses. I mean, just so many uses. So I'm really excited about trying that out. I will link all those videos in the description below for you to check out. My son and I made oatmeal raisin cookies this morning, so I'm going to go check those out. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.